Hey guys, my name is Octodoodle, and welcome to Crunker Trigger Circuitry Episode 3. In this episode, we're going to be going over the highly requested topic of living Raza for use in parkour maps, and, you know, wherever you want. So, anyways, let's just get this started off by taking a look at how this goes. So here we are in the map. As you can see, we've got our little parkour thing. We've got some, you know, cubes here. These are actually part of the circuit. Anyways, if we are to just, you know, hop onto this parkour thing and start going, you'll see that lava starts to rise from the floor. And if we, you know, stay here for too long and it touches us, you can see we die. So I'm actually dead there. Anyways, so we did. Anyway, let's do it again. So if we don't touch it and we keep going, we avoid it and we go fast enough, you can see we can make it to the other side. No problems at all. And once it reaches the top, it'll just drain. Pretty much how the system works is you've got sort of a timeline of what's happening. The lava all start spawned in like this, and one by one, they are, you know, spawned in. Well, toggled from off to on. And how that works is so the player spawns in, and it triggers this, which destroys all of these, so they start, so they're not there um, by default when the player spawns in. Um, and then when the player goes past this gate here, this trigger here, sorry, which is on, on enter trigger, it destroys this guy here, which destroys every single one of these little cubes. And each of these cubes is set to on respawn toggle destructible interface. So the interface, so each of them are set to a different one. So this first one is set to this one here, this bottom interface here, this bottom trigger. And then each of them have a different respawn time. So this one has a timer of one, two, and then this one's two, this one's three, this one's four. So pretty much that means it's just a timeline. So first, second, this one respawns, second, second, this one, and so on. And then to get it to drain, after 9.2 seconds, there's a shorter interval between these between than between these two. It pretty much triggers all of these, and then, you know, that will just reset at that point. Uh, and this respawns after the whole thing is done. Anyways, let's see how we can make this from start to finish. First things first, you're going to want two platforms. I'm not going to bother making them from a cube because I can just take these ones from here. You're going to want two platforms, you know, spaced out a decent bit. And in between them, you're going to want to get a trigger. So go to Object, Tools, and then Trigger. Bring that across and bring it so that it's going in between your two platforms. I'm just going to make mine three high. Now you're going to want to give this something that looks a little bit like lava. So go to Texture, go to Liquid, and then the color you're going to want to make quite red. And the emissive, you're going to want to make quite orange. This will do just fine. Now, underneath this, you're probably going to want to, you know, just a solid platform that the player can go on when, you know, there's no lava there. So we're just going to quickly make one of those. And so this, you're going to want to make it on enter, kill player. So that's the event and the action. And you're going to want to make its ID 1 and its target 0. Now, duplicate this and move it up so it's just on top of the other one, the one underneath it, sorry. And all you want to do is change the ID from 1 to 2. Duplicate this up, change the ID from 2 to 3, and so on until you have your desired height. We're going to go up 9 levels. Now what you're going to want to do is take one of these triggers and duplicate it using Shift R. And at the entrance to your parkour area, you're going to want to bring this up so that the player, if they're going to continue through the parkour, has to go through this. You're going to want to make this not visible, so in the top right corner, make it not visible, and make it on enter, destroy interface. Make the ID 100, and the target 101. Next, we're going to have to make the system that we need where the player spawns. So you're probably going to want to have to put this at, you know, the beginning of your map, because this is just what sets this up to be ready. So go down to this little cross down here in the bottom right corner, click it, and then create a spawn point. So let's just put our spawn here, but this could be really anywhere. Underneath the spawn, what you're going to want to do is put a trigger. So we're just going to duplicate this one that we already have here. So bring across, we're just going to make ours visible to make our lives easier and make it, you know, bright yellow, because why not? So put this underneath where the player is going to spawn so that when the player spawns in, they trigger it. You're going to want this make, to make this a on enter, destroy interface, and give it health of like 5,000. Make the ID 102 and the target 103. Duplicate this across, make it into a nice little cube, make the ID 103 and the target 102. And you're going to want to make this on destroy, destroy interface. And that pretty much just gets rid of this on enter trigger when the player spawns in so that it can't be triggered again and mess up the system. 
Next, you're going to want to duplicate this across and make the target one. So what this is doing is actually just destroying all of these because they start, you know, toggled on. So it's destroying all of them so that when the player first comes along and looks in, it's not filled with lava. So we have to make one for each layer we have. So we have nine, so we're going to have to make nine of these. So just duplicate this across, make the target two, three, four, and so on. So after we've made all of these, this bit is done, but what we have to quickly do is go through all of these and give them some health. So just set the health on each of them to 5,000. So when we spawn in, we should see all the lava disappear. Let's give it a shot. So all the lava's gone, just like we wanted. Now it's time to make the lava rising system. So we already have our pre-placed trigger uh, on enter. So that means that when we walk through here, we can trigger some stuff that makes this lava rise. So let's make it. Duplicate a trigger across from anywhere on your map that you want to use, just so you have a trigger. Make the ID 101 and the target 100. What this pretty much does is just destroy this after it's been triggered so that it can't be triggered multiple times and mess up the circuit. Next, you're gonna to wanna to duplicate that and make the target one. You want to set this to on respawn toggle destructible interface and set the timer to whatever you want the interval between your lava rise to be. So if we want it to rise relatively quickly, we can set it to one. And if we want it to be you know, even faster, we can set it to 0.5. Let's just put it at one because that's sort of a nice you know, round number. So we're going to set that timer to one. Next, you're going to want to duplicate this and change the target to two. So this is for the second layer of lava. And since it's the second one, we want to have a one second interval. So we're going to set the respawn timer to two. And now we do the same for the three. We set the target to three and the timer to three. So I'm just gonna do this. And then once we're midway through and we're down to the draining section, I'll catch back with you guys. Sweet, now I've done all of these. This one sets the destroy interface, this destroys this, and then triggers all of these, which toggle these destructible interfaces and make the lava rise. Let's give it a quick test. So we've spawned in, the lava isn't there right now. If we walk here, it should start to rise. And there we go, just what we wanted. Now, let's make it go back down. Pretty much what we do to make it go back down is just continue the sort of circuit that's going along here. So we're just gonna duplicate this across. We're going to leave it at target nine because we're making the first one disappear first, of course. And we're going to set the target to whatever interval, interval we want between the lava going back down. So we want the lava to drain faster than it went up. So we're going to make the timer 9.2. And this all can stay exactly the same. So we duplicate this across. Now we're going for target 8, which is the one below 9. And we're going to make the timer 9.4, because it's happening 0.2 seconds after the top one. So we just carry on doing this. This is now 9.6. This is now 7. Until we're all the way back down to 1. Sweet. Now I've got the whole circuit done for the lava rising and falling. One last thing we have to do is figure out how long this whole circuit takes. So in this case, it takes 10.8 seconds because we can just check the last trigger. And then we have to go to this first trigger here and we have to set the respawn timer to 10.8 seconds. So whatever the total time this takes to do, you have to set that first one to. And you also have to do the same for this on enter trigger. So we go here and we set the health to you know a random number. Let's just say 5,000. And we set the timer to 10.8. Let's give it a quick test. So we've spawned in, the lava's not there right now. And if we walk into here, we should see the lava starts to rise and over there as well because it's linked. So yeah, the lava's gonna rise all the way up and then when it gets to the top, it's going to drain. Oh, it actually killed us. All we have to do now is pretty much just add some parkour in between and then we've got a lovely little circuit going here. Let's do it. So when you're having lava rising, for your parkour, it's important that the parkour actually involves different heights. So let's just have one at this height here. Pro tip, don't have any of your parkour surfaces at the same height as your lava surfaces because it creates this really ugly flickering effect that you can see here. So always have it, you know, slightly different. Sweet, now that we've put some parkour in here, let's give it a test. There we go, so now we're in. We've got our little parkour thing here, so let's give it a shot. We hop through here, the lava is rising, it's a bit freaky. You know, if we were to stay here for too long, you'd see that we'd quickly meet our demise, like so. And there it goes, it drains all again. It's a really, really cool effect and probably, you know, would really spice up parkour maps, you know, if we had more things like this in them. Anyways, guys, that does do it for me for this episode. You know, I really hope you enjoyed because this was a pretty fun one to make. Um, I think it's a really creative thing that I'd really, you know, be happy to see in more maps. But yeah, that's it. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.